one of the options dealing with this is m making our tax system more equitable. The French, the Germans, the Brits have all increased tax rates, including, including con conservative governments, on the top 1%. That's the former NDP leader at Broadbent talking about his new proposals to close the income equality gap in Canada. It's a new report out from the Broadbent Institute, and it points to statistics showing that the gap between the rich and poor is growing wider in Canada compared to other countries. He says the problem has been policies, and he says to stem the tide, he recommends, and the um, Institute recommends higher taxes on capital gains and investment income on the top 1%. And he also says a carbon tax could also be a solution. Ed Broadbent was on this program uh, a couple minutes ago talking about these. Would these policies really lift Canadians out of poverty? Would they kill a national economy by driving away investment? And what will these do to the NDP? Should the NDP held, be held accountable for what Ed Broadbent and the Broadbent Institute says? Joining me now from Toronto. Kelly Leach, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Labour, Peggy Nash, the NDP finance critic, and from Regina, the Deputy Liberal Leader, uh, Ralph Goodale. All of you, good to see you. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Hi, Evan. Hi, Kevin. It was very nice. Thank uh, you. Peggy Nash, let me start with you. Does the NDP support the broadband uh, idea of increasing taxes on the so-called 1%, boosting capital gain taxes, and taxes on investment income, and or considering a carbon tax? All solutions, Ed Broadbent said, ought to be considered. Well, Evan, we think that it's important to put a focus on inequality, so I think the Broadbent Institute has done a useful thing in, in focusing on that. It is an issue that is uh, top of mind for many Canadians now, but uh, the measures that Mr. Broadbent is calling for, many of them we certainly have not called for. It's not our position, for example, to increase personal taxes, and in spite of conservative ads for which we have our own ad response today, uh, we are not calling for a carbon tax. So uh, while we think the, the topic is an important one, the issue of inequality, the measures that Mr. Broadbent's calling for are not measures we've called for. All right, just, just, I just wonder, he's such an iconic figure for the NDP. He's the former leader. I recognize Preston Manning has his own institute, and he does, he says things that also are not part of the conservative playbook. But is it dangerous for the NDP now to have Ed Broadbent talking about higher taxes and talking about a carbon tax? No, I don't think it's dangerous. I mean, I think people understand that the Broadbent Institute is an arm's length, independent institute. They're going to make their own uh, recommendations. They're going to have the freedom to say what they want, uh, whereas it's, it's very different for New Democrats as a party. I mean, our our party leader, our, our democratic institutions determine our direction. So they're two very different things. And we see, you mentioned the Manning Institute, the Fraser Institute. There are many uh, institutions and other bodies that will be part of the public debate. But I don't think people confuse those with political parties. Uh, Kelly Leach, does this paper, I mean, there's two aspects. One, it paints a picture of a pretty grim statistic, like last year's Conference Board of Canada report that says, out of 17 similar countries, Canada has the fourth largest increase in income inequality. So is he right about the diagnosis? Would you agree with that? Or, and what about the prognosis of the higher tax as one possible solution? You know, Evan, we've been really focused on creating jobs and economic growth. And we believe that there's an opportunity when an individual has a job in order to improve their opportunities, to be able to contribute more to their communities. And that's why we've seen a significant decrease over the last number of years since the Conservative Party has been in government of low-income families being raised out of poverty. So whether that be because of the universal child tax credit, which has op provided an opportunity for more than 55,000 children to be lifted out of low-income families, or whether that be the working income tax benefit, which has aided more than 1.5 million Canadians. These are initiatives targeted at making sure that Canadians have opportunities, let alone the creation of 770,000 net new jobs. But so I mean, there are some, I, I mean, I don't want to challenge your statistics, but but you know, 14 percent of all income in Canada is received by the top one percent. It was eight percent in the 1980s. There is a growing gap between the rich and poor. Well, do, actually, do, I does beg he to differ wrong? with you. I beg to differ with you, Evan. You know, we've decreased taxes on the GST alone from seven to six to five percent. We've decreased taxes on small businesses, providing small business owners an opportunity to create jobs, and we've seen a tangible decrease from 18.4 percent to 8.1 percent 
of low-income Canadian children being lifted out of poverty. That's a huge decrease from 18.4% in 1996 under the Liberals to 8.1% under our government in 2012. That's a tangible difference that we see amongst Canadian families, let alone that Canadian families are paying $3,000 less per year in tax. So these are all things, I think, wor working towards providing Canadian families an opportunity to have money in their pockets to be able to provide but, for but, their families. Okay, uh, I want to get Ralph Goodell, but just, just quickly, are you suggesting there, I just want to get this straight, just help me understand, are you saying because of those measures, you're arguing there is not a growing gap between the rich, the top earners, and the bottom earners? That you're arguing that there's no growing gap between the rich and poor? Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we have an opportunity here where we are seeing statistics that outline exactly a decrease in low-income Canadians. So that whether that be, as I said before, 18.4 to 8.1 low-income families that have children in them, whether that be from over 50 percent to just over 20 percent of low-income single mothers. Those are tangible changes we've seen with the Conservative government. All right, Ralph, Ralph Goodell, do you agree with uh, Ed, the, Ed, the Broadbent report uh, before we get to the diagnosis, which could be higher taxes and or carbon tax, but first on the prognosis, is there a growing gap between the rich and poor? Well, there is indeed, and, and the Conservative line, which you uh, have just heard, is deny, 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 uh, even in the face of uh, uh, strong evidence to the contrary. The conference board, the OECD, the UN uh, Commissioner on Hunger, um, but perhaps most compellingly, the Bank of Canada, the governor of the Bank of Canada, uh, says those who deny that there is growing inequality between the very rich and uh, most of the rest of Canadians are simply wrong. That's what Mr. Carney has said. He's also said those who want to turn this into some kind of class warfare are also wrong. We're all in this together. And it is very important for Canadians to work together. And, and the critical thing is to make the pie bigger. Economic growth is what we have to achieve. Not just a question of, 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 of fair distribution. That is always an issue. And we always need to work at that. But we have to make this pie bigger so all Canadians can be, uh, can be better off. Uh, and and the, uh, the denial that a problem exists is uh, just living in, in Never Never Land. I got a, little, a couple minutes here. I, I'll start with you, Mr. Goodall, then Kelly H. What about the prognosis side, which he talks about, frankly? Uh, you got to tax the upper income people more so it's more equitable. And you might really support a, a carbon tax, which, of course, was part of Mr. Dion's 2008 green shift policy. Well, obviously, uh, on the broad question of dealing with, uh, uh, with carbon and, and, and that kind of uh, pollution, uh, every, par every party, and I say every single one of them, has a proposal for uh, putting a price on carbon in some way. But on the, on the issue of... But, uh, sir, don't, of just don't duck out what... Um, Ed Broadbent says he uses the word carbon tax. Liberals are okay to use that word? We have, we have said you need to price carbon. There are various techniques to do it. You can use regulations. You can use the tax system. You can, uh, uh, you can use a trading system. Various, uh, various people will come forward with various proposals. But the critical thing is to ensure that, uh, that carbon has a, a price. And uh, the Conservatives have a proposal for that. The NDP have a proposal for that. Uh, there are different ideas that will be that will be debated, but on the broad question of uh, of the the uh, the tax on on uh, high income Canadians, Evan, uh, the amount of revenue that would raise is uh, is relatively small in comparison to what the needs are. It would be better for the government to uh, uh, to be removing uh, the payroll tax on small businesses uh, that they've imposed six hundred million dollars more every year, year after year. Uh, that's a tax on jobs. That's uh, that's counterproductive. They should get rid of the clawback that is a disincentive on uh, on those uh, people who are on EI claims that are trying to find jobs. And they should make their tax uh, uh, credits refundable so that low-income Canadians can benefit from those just as much as high-income Canadians. Uh, Th those things would actually address income inequality. Uh, Kelly, Kelly, lots of lots of talk about tax. Will you hold the NDP accountable for what Mr. Broadbent said, or is this? Broadbent Institute's got their own separate view than the NDP. Look, we've been very clear about lowering taxes, whether that be lowering the GST from 7 to 6 to 5 percent, whether that be lowering taxes on small businesses. And we have been adamant over the last number of weeks talking about the NDP carbon tax. 
a $21 billion tax on Canadians and on everything for from... For which they have been pilloried from, yes. by every media from outlet. Yeah. And see our, see our ad to today on NDP.ca. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I mean, so I think... Can, that, can, that just a second. Kelly, you, you, I know the Conservatives keep saying that there's a carbon tax. But, you know, the NDP keeps saying it's not. It's a cap and trade, which is exactly what the Conservatives proposed mm -hmm. in a previous election. So, I mean, uh, is there any... Uh, I mean, I know you're going to say the carbon. They say that it's not true, although, uh, to be fair, Ed Broadbent says they ought to talk about it. Look, um, Mr. Broadbent has significant influence in that party, evidence alone of his involvement in the previous NDP leadership. Um, that being said, it is very clear For the losing on side. the NDP, <laughs> on the ND, in the NDP platform, about talking about a carbon tax. But let's be very clear: there are a number of initiatives this government has taken in order to help those individuals who are looking for employment. We want to make sure that every Canadian has the opportunity to have a job. So whether that be the targeted initiative for older workers, the youth employment strategy, or numerous other attempts to provide opportunities for Canadians to be employed, but I think that's Evan, what we're focused Evan, on. I think there's the problem right there is that we're not creating enough jobs. That's the problem. There are more than 300,000 people who are now in the labor right. market that were not there uh, uh, at, before the depths of the recession. And so we're not creating enough jobs. And if you want to deal with the issue of inequality, we need to be able, we need to be creating good Family supporting and jobs. And 90% of our jobs have to be been well, strengthening well, I, okay, our pension I, I gotta leave it there. Uh, and Ed, Ed Broadbent, is there. the Broadbent Institute kicks off this discussion about income inequality. Obviously, the premise is now up for debate, and of course, the prognosis is up for debate. Kelly Leach, Peggy Nash, Ralph Goodell. I know this is a break week from Parliament. I know you're hard at work in your, in your writings, but the debate keeps going here on Power and Politics. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Evan. Still ahead on Power and Politics.